Hello everyone, a successful weekend in Fergus, Ontario. March for Life prayer meetings, a powerful art display at Redeemer University, and Tabitha lets us know about the Family Life Tour. And finally, Daniel brings an update on ARPA's submissions for Bill C-5. It is Wednesday, April 13th, and this is Quick Update. Now, Andre and Jojo join us from Fergus, Ontario. Well, thanks, Colin. So I'm here with Jojo Ruba from uh, Free to Care, and we just wrapped up our presentation workshop in Fergus, Ontario. Uh, it went really, really well. Great attendance last night, uh, great engagement with our speeches, and then great engagement in the workshop today with office bearers and other spiritual leaders. Jojo, impressions? Well, this is our seventh one, and everywhere we go, we hear stories like the mom in BC whose 13-year-old daughter just came out as bisexual, or people who come and share what's happening in their churches, whether or not they are to minister to people who are same-sex attracted or who are transgender confused. And, and we were able to, in that seminar, I think, give them a couple of things. First, give them hope that the gospel is still good news yeah. and that we can still share good news with people because we ought to. And then the, secondly, that we don't have to be afraid of laws designed so badly. Mm -hmm. And so we really want to give that encouragement, continue to encourage you to start thinking about how we can live biblically as ambassadors for Christ, despite what very foolish laws look like. Mm -hmm. So we have two more uh, left scheduled. We have one more in Ottawa the first weekend of May, as well as one in Calgary in late April. So stay tuned for that. Back to you, Colin. Thanks so much, Andre and Jojo. We are rapidly approaching the Marches for Life across the country. With that, we're organizing prayer meetings in Ottawa, Toronto, and Vancouver this year. Now here in Ottawa, the prayer meeting is Thursday, May 12th, from 11, at, starting at 11 a.m. at St. Peter and St. Paul's Anglican Church downtown Ottawa on Metcalf. The rally and march on Parliament Hill follows at 12.30 p.m. For more, go to our dedicated March for Life page on arpacanada.ca. Now here's Levi with details for Vancouver's event and Ryan for Toronto. The BC March for Life is Thursday, May 12th. The prayer service is at Central Baptist Church at noon. The march starts at 145 from Centennial Square and that wraps up at the legislature at 2 o'clock. Hope to see you there. After two years of virtual activities, the Toronto March for Life is back. We look forward to welcoming you to Queen's Park on Friday, May the 13th, starting at noon for a march and a rally. We do hope to hold a prayer meeting ahead of time, but we don't have those details figured out just yet. As soon as we have them, we'll be sure to get them to you. Back to you, Colin. Thanks, Ryan and Levi. While we won't be having a prayer meeting in Alberta, the March for Life rally there is Thursday, May 12th, gathering at the legislature in Edmonton at noon. Now up next, Henny Kunstra joins us from Redeemer University. Henny attended our God and Government Youth Conference back in 2017 as a high school student, and the issue of internet pornography and its connection to human trafficking and abuse has been something that she has cared passionately about. Now in her final year of studies at Redeemer, she's had an opportunity to share her work in a display on this topic. Hi, I'm Henny Kunstra, and I'm a fourth year art major and media major at Redeemer University. This semester for my final exhibition, I decided to explore the disturbing consequences of pornography, specifically in the lives of teens and young adults. Combining expressive and atmospheric painting and video segments, the artwork questions our distorted views of sex and sheds light on the greater issues that pornography creates. The body of work exposes the harms of pornography without further exploiting its victims. The paintings and videos contain indirect hints at a host of issues in teen slash young adult culture, such as body shaming, body image ideals, the over-sexualization of teens, hookup culture, normalized abuse, and sex trafficking. So I intentionally made my paintings and videos without showing pornographic images, which was challenging but necessary to focus on the contributing factors and effects of pornography. Using symbolism and sensation, I created imagery that is universal and relatable, communicating the human experience, feeling, and outcome. Thanks, and back to you, Colin. Thanks so much, Henny. We hope the display will impact those who are able to see it. Next up, Tabitha shares details of the Family Life Tour coming up very soon. Thanks, Colin. We often focus a lot of our energy on federal politics when it comes to the pro-life movement, but there's a lot that provincial governments can do in order to promote the life and the health of both the mother and the pre-born child. And that's why we're coming to Alberta April 25th to 29th in order to focus specifically on provincial pro-life initiatives. We're going to talk about parental involvement, we're going to talk about the abortion pill, what we can do to counter that. So we're really hoping to have you come out, we're hoping to equip you with how to lock for these initiatives and how to promote the best for Albertans. So I really hope to see you there. Again, those are April 25th to 29th and you can find more information on our website. Back to you, Colin. 
Thanks so much, Tabitha. Finally, Daniel joins us on Bill C-5. Thanks, Colin. Bill C-5 was recently sent to the Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights for review. The bill is a criminal justice reform bill that would repeal mandatory minimum penalties for various offenses. It would also provide greater opportunity for conditional sentencing, such as house arrest, as an alternative to prison. Last week, ARPA Canada submitted a brief to the Justice Committee, and we encourage them to consider amendments to the bill in light of principles of restorative justice. Bill C-5 includes some good attempts to improve the justice system in a way that values restoration and relationships. But in other ways, the bill goes too far, and there are concerning aspects which don't recognize the moral implications of crime and the need for personal responsibility. In our submission, we provide eight recommendations to improve the legislation and align it further with restorative justice principles. We encourage you to read more about ARPA's arguments and recommendations at the link below. Back to you, Colin. Thanks so much, Daniel. That's it for quick updates. Thanks to you for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.